Okay, so this is day six of my uh, Achilles injury. I haven't spoke to you since day two, because uh, not a lot. Well, stuff has changed, but I don't want to bore you every day with the video. So, first thing I'll say, the things I've maintained. So the things which haven't changed are the way I'm using the spiky board and roller. Yeah, that's exactly the same as it was in the last video. So I won't go on about that, but that's going on in the background and the taping stayed the same. So I'm taping two days on, two days off. Uh, the same taping, so I showed you day one. Um, and that's just still gonna keep going on that cycle for a bit. Uh, what have I, where we left off, we were, we were sort of looking at calf raises, okay? And I think I was on a double leg on the floor and a double leg off a step on day two. And I'm gonna show you what I've done with that and where that is now. So initially, uh, so I was working double legs um, and I was finding, you know, single legs was, was a non-starter completely. What I did find though, about day three, four, is if I tried to do a single leg, but instead of using my leg like normal, but if I took my foot in, lifted my toes up, I could then perform a single leg calf raise yeah which I, which I was quite pleased with so I started doing it like that with my toe in uh, my toes pointing in my curling my toes up that's good for a number of reasons so what I'm doing there is trying to not put too much pressure through the calcaneus Achilles tendon yeah and what I'm really trying to do there is isolate my tip posterior tendon Tib posterior makes your medial arch, along with tib anterior, make the medial arch of your foot. So I was just exercising that, which is actually a really good kind of uh, preventative exercise for things like um, shin splints, um, tib posterior's tendency to weaken. So that's a good rehab, you know, a preventative exercise anyway, but it was also getting my calf complex moving without putting too much strain through the Achilles tendon. So I did that for a bit, you know, six at a time, it started to get angry, I'd just back off, and then the two I could build up to 12 quite comfortably, just sporadically throughout the day. When I could do that, I felt like I want to get onto single leg now, and I found something magic, right? If I tried to lift off, I was like, oh, I can't do that. If I held onto my kitchen sides, so I've got my counters, I could lift off relatively com com comfortably, yeah? So then what I was doing, to begin with, was all my body weight. And then as I was going, I'd just take the pressure off and lift off to just one hand on fingers and then eventually onto just one finger. And then like magically, I could just take my hands off and it would allow me to do it. If I, now I do 10 say, go back to that next time I was at the kettle, all these exercises I've done while I make tea, couldn't lift off again. So again, body weight, like take the pressure of my body weight off with my hands, spilt tea on the floor, yeah. And then start performing the exercise, slowly lift, the, take the weight off. And eventually you're just holding with one finger and you're going, then you lift your hand off and you're performing the exercise. Um, it's quite good and I don't really understand why, but it works, so that's good. So that's what I was doing calf raise wise. Yeah, it's getting that calf going. Can now do single leg calf raises relatively comfortably. The last thing I was doing, I was modifying how I was moving, yeah? So if I was coming downstairs, maybe once or twice a day, I'd come down backwards, toe on the step, and just allow a little stretch through the Achilles as I went downstairs, holding onto the banister, nice and stable, nice and controlled. Yeah, I wasn't running backwards downstairs. I was doing it very controlled, very stably. So it took me a little bit of time to get down the steps, but that would really sort of give a bit of an active stretch and loosen it up. The other thing I found, I noticed to myself, is I started to walk on my tiptoe on my injured leg. So I was walking a bit like this, yeah? And that's a movement pattern I didn't want to reinforce. So what I've been forcing myself to do is roll through the foot as I'm walking. And as I roll, so I'm sort of planting my heel, rolling my foot through, and then forcing myself to push off a bit from the toe. So I've been doing walking like that now. Uh, yeah, it's perfectly normal. Um, 
but just to keep no i don't want it to seize up and lock up and get stuck in a short position so i'm forcing it to work when i'm walking trying to stop any kind of weird modified movement pattern so that's what that's that's that bit done so moving on to the car phases um, as i'm walking upstairs i'm walking with my toes on the front of the stairs so i have to push off through the car as i'm going um, and i've used the banister as an aid to begin with yeah and if it aggravated halfway up i would stop i wouldn't do anything which was aggravating the whole time in the back of your head you should be thinking do not make this worse yeah push it a little bit discomfort's fine pain no don't push it to pain you don't want to prolong the injury by getting overexcited. Uh, yeah so that's that did my first run today um first run back so when we're thinking about running and running after injury we're thinking about the load and what we want to do is decrease the load so we can perform the activity we want and the load's broken into three sections so you've got intensity frequency and duration yeah so intensity that's your minute miles the, the pace you're running so i normally on a road um i do a sort of comfortable 730 740 minute mile so today i averaged 945 yeah i added two and a bit minutes to my to my uh pace to reduce the intensity the duration you know the minimum run i normally do is six miles so i did three today yeah so i've i've reduced the distance i'm doing and then the frequency you know i did one today i'm going to give it quite a few days before i go again rather than doing every other day like you normally would be doing so you reduce those three elements because again we don't want to re-injure but we do want to perform the activity we want yeah and we want to get back to it as quick as we can so my run this morning three miles slow pace it's dull i ain't gonna lie but i felt good to get out so i thought what can i do with this run to kind of maximize the time you know i know i've got to go slow and i know i can't go fast so what else could i do to make it more beneficial so i do this exercise which i recommend for ankle injuries which is um i try to straight and then i'd sidestep to the left and then i'd run straight and then i'd sidestep to the right back to straight and then i jog backwards so what i'm doing is i'm making my ankle work forwards to the side to the other side and backwards yeah and you know sometimes you know you turn around jog backwards you'll be about 10 paces and it starts to aggravate so i turn around again yeah didn't want to aggravate it too much but what i'm trying to do is get the ankle used to working in different directions again um, it's a good injury prevention style run because you're forcing the ankle into different ways and making it hold your body weight uh, to begin with it was very painful when i stepped up not very painful but i felt it and i was like right so i walked you know i did a little jog and then i walked you know because it started to if the pain came up i would back right down yeah so i had to walk a couple of times until i got to the country park where i am running it's literally 100 meters away from my house and it's a track so I kept it nice and close, knowing that if I aggravated, I could just stop and do a gentle walk home. Yeah, I didn't want to go on a three mile lap where I could get stuck and have to have a mile and a half to get home. I didn't want that. So you need to keep close to home so you have a get out of jail free card and you could just walk it off and get home rather than limp a mile in. OK. The other thing I was doing, which I've not really done before, but I quite like, is because, you know, I was bored. So what I was doing is I was transitioning from forward and through a 360 and back to forward. So I was doing that a few times and I found I liked going left. So I started going right a bit. So I was just doing a circle as I was running, but that's making my feet think, you know, and hold me in different directions. Because when we, when we injure our feet, it's because we misstep and it goes at a funny angle and then that, and it's not used to holding us at that angle. And then, then we twist an ankle or we, we twist the knee. So forcing it into these different directions was that stage. So that's, so that's you know, what I'm maintaining. That's what I'm um, doing with the calves. 
and that's how I modify my run. The last thing I'm going to do is quickly, because we're going on a bit now, is I now want to build in some full body kind of look towards some functional exercise. Okay, so I'll just rattle through the progressions of these. Anyone who's been to me has probably seen a squat to row at least once, because uh, I really like the squat to row style exercises. So resistance band, yeah, arms nice and straight, sink down into a squat, come up and perform a row, okay? This doesn't really bother my calf, so I just did a few initially just to get it used to back to doing the action again, okay? So then I can modify it. So I bring in some blocks, put my feet on the edge of the blocks, I've got my band. Now when I squat, mm -hmm. when I squat, I can put a bit of a stretch through the calf. When I row, I'm coming up into a calf raise. So stretch through on the way down, and then calf raise on the way up. So now I'm building a bit of a full body, more functional exercise, incorporating the calf, okay? So I add blocks to my squat to row to begin with. Once that feels comfortable, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go like so. Yeah, so I've got one leg back, one leg forward, and then see how that feels in the calf. It feels okay, so now what I wanna do is get onto one leg. So now I'm doing a bit of active, so I'm doing a bit of glute work, I'm doing a bit of back work, but I'm really trying to get the calf to function at the same time. So if I could do that, which I can, what I'm gonna do, same thing, but come up onto tiptoe. And I'm holding at the end to stabilize. Now, when I did this initially, there we go. You can see I faulted a bit on that third one. So it's not quite ready to go all the way up onto a car phrase at the end. So I'd stick with a heel on the floor and do that for a few days. And then I'm gonna try and build in that car phrase at the end. Get it moving, uh, get it moving a bit more functionally again. So that that's the next thing, okay. But I'll do another video in a few days, and we'll be doing a lot more of this because the other stuff should be done then, finished, and then we can concentrate on some more interesting style exercise to really rehab this ankle. But get it. My goal in my head now is I want to get it better than it was before, so I never have this problem again. I got a bit slack out on my exercises and I just stuck to running which was a mistake and that's why I got this injury. I dropped all the other exercise for a while and got focused on upping my mileage. So I need to go back and then rebuild and make sure this never happens again by building it stronger. And uh, that's how we get on. A bit dull that one wasn't it? But I hope you get the idea. The next one will be better because it won't be Sunday. And I'll be a bit more awake. All right, I'll see you in a few days.